The past few years there's been quite a bit of a buzz about ACES. We've been hearing how great it is workflow wise and how it enables consistency throughout a production chain. I've been avoiding dealing with ACES mostly because my work doesn't really benefit from it. I don't work on projects that involve big teams or have projects that utilize both video and CG. So the existing linear workflow works absolutely fine for me and I would say it's fine for the majority of solo CG artists working on CG first projects. But since ACES is now the default setting in Redshift, there's no escaping it, so I might as well figure out how to work with it. And to get up to speed, I've enlisted the help of several people who already spent some time with ACES. I've also spent quite a bit of time reading up on the subject, and even though I would like to say things are perfectly clear, there's still some confusion about ACES, even amongst people already using it. Color management is a tricky subject, so not a lot of people know everything there is to know about ACES. So there's been situations where someone says one thing and another one disproves that thing, and it just goes on and on like that. I've witnessed that firsthand as I was testing things out. Things that I've heard or read weren't really panning out. So instead of me giving you wrong information about ACES, I'm still very much in the process of learning about it, I'll just concentrate on the things I've learned and tested so far. So, in this video we're going to talk about how to set up ACES in Redshift so it works in a predictable way, how to set up Redshift the old linear way if you don't want to use ACES at all, and also how to edit your ACES images in Photoshop without any extra plugins. The more I work with ACES, the more comfortable I will feel diving into other more complex aspects like compositing in ACES and having an ACES only workflow for video and CG. But for now, we'll just stick to the basics, which is going to be extremely useful if you're in the same position as myself. So with that out of the way, let's start. Before we dive into Redshift, let me first give you a quick and dirty description of what ACES is, just so we're all on the same page. ACES is a color encoding system and it comes in two pieces, a set of color spaces and a transformation step in the end. There are several different color spaces like ACES, CC, CCT, CG, but the one we're interested in for 3D work is the CG version. The transformation step in the end is the one responsible for tone mapping, taking all the color information and reducing it into something that is viewable on a screen, like what happens when we have an HDR video and convert it to SDR. So let's see where these two pieces exist inside Redshift. Both can be found in render settings. The first part, the color space, is under the rendering color space section. By default, it's set to ACES CG, so we're good to go there. We don't need to change anything here. The second part, the tone mapping part, is in the view section. By default, it comes with ACES SDR, but we don't really need this part. That was one of the most infuriating things when I first played with Redshift's new settings. All my renders were dark and super contrasty, making it very difficult to light and color a scene. But we don't need the tone mapping part at all. If we leave that on, we're baking in a look which will make color grading and other applications a much more difficult process. So we can select the untone mapped option and now our renders are back to normal. More on that later on. So why does the movie industry love ACES so much? It's because of the very wide color space and the standardized workflow between different teams, CG artists, colorists, cameras, and so on and so forth. The wide color space of ACES is perfect for archiving and general future-proofing since it's a much wider space than sRGB. But keep in mind that ACES CG, the flavor we're using for 3D work, is a much more reduced space. We're not using all of ACES color space. Now, let's dig into Redshift's color management settings. As I've mentioned before, if we use Redshift's default settings, we will have this annoying problem where in the end, the tone mapping kicks in. It was especially very confusing the first time I used Redshift's render view because the grading was done live, so everything looked so contrasty and dark. It was only when I used the picture viewer that I realized what was going on. There, the tone mapping is applied in the end, so after I saw that, it was easy to decipher what was going on. So, what I always do before even starting a render, I go to render settings and select the untone mapped option. We now have a flat look without any extra grading added on top. This will give us the same look as the old linear workflow. 
And to make sure that that's the case, we'll trigger a render using the old linear way. To do that, we switch to Linear Rec 709 for the color space, and we'll leave Untone Mapped as is. Now, if we render and go back and forth between the images, you see that we get the same looking results. There are some very minor differences, but for all intents and purposes, they're the same, for me at least. Okay, so that's that. We now know how to work the old linear way and how to also work with aces without tone mapping. So far, so good. Here's though where things get a little bit weird. While the aces settings do look correct, it turns out they're not. Let me show you what I mean. To make it a little bit more obvious, let's increase the intensity of the light by quite a bit. The image is now overexposed, but since it's a 32-bit image, we will be able to get all this information back by correcting the exposure in post. So let's load this up in Photoshop and let's see what we've got. Let's apply an exposure adjustment layer. And now if we start reducing the exposure, we don't get the information back. The colors are clipped. It might not be so easy to see here because there's a lot of color and I didn't go crazy with overexposing the image. So let's load up another scene that will make it instantly clear. By the way, the croissant you see here is part of a collection of 3D scanned food assets I just released. It has 15 objects in total ranging from baked goods to fruits and nuts. I'll have the link in the description below so if you're interested in these types of assets, you know where to find them. So this is how our scene looks when correctly exposed. Let's now go crazy and overexpose the heck out of the image. Like before, we're using Aces CG, Untone Mapped, and Compensate View Transform enabled. The image looks like crap, but since it's a 32-bit image, we should be able to recover all the information. But as you can see, when we reduce the exposure, the colors are clamped. There's no extra information there. Now let's check the linear way. We'll pick Rec. 709 sRGB and render once more. As expected, the render looks the same, but now when we try to recover the information in Photoshop, it's all there. Why do we have this discrepancy? <laughs> That's a good question, but I have no clue why this happens. It turns out that what we actually need for ACES to work correctly are the following settings. We need ACES CG, of course, then RAW in the view section, and finally we have to uncheck the Compensate for View Transform option. Now, if we load up that render in Photoshop and reduce the exposure, all the information is there. Again, I don't know why the Untone Mapped version doesn't work, but yeah, RAW is what we actually need. As you can see though, there's quite a bit of a difference in color when we compare this image to the linear sRGB version. And here's where we need to adjust things correctly in Photoshop. We just need to apply the correct color profile. So let's duplicate the image, get rid of the exposure layer, and now we just have to go to Image, Assign Profile, and pick the ACES CG version. Now if we apply the exposure setting again, the colors between the sRGB and the ACES version match. I know what you're thinking, we should have applied the same color profile to the Untone Map version, but it doesn't work, the image will still look wrong. So now we know the correct settings for ACES and external color grading. But here's the thing, we also want to see the correct colors in cinema and not have to deal with a washed out version of the image. Just as a reminder, this is how the image should look, and if we use the correct settings for grading, this is how the image looks in cinema. So what do we do? My current solution is not the most elegant, but that's where I'm at currently. As I'm working on the image in cinema, I'm using ACCG, Untone Mapped, and I have Compensate View Transform checked. This ensures that what I'm seeing is what I will get in the end. When I'm ready to do the final render, I switch to the correct export settings, which are ACCG, RAW, and Compensate View Transform option unchecked. 
or we could just skip all that and just use the old linear options. These will work both in cinema and external grading. There's not a lot of difference between aces and the old linear way, so if you're a solo artist, you can just use the old linear sRGB, you'll be fine. The difference in highlight roll-off that people see with aces CG can be easily recovered in linear sRGB, so you're not really missing anything. But since the whole aces workflow comes for free in Redshift, we might as well use it. The only annoying thing if you're using Redshift in a cinema will be this setting switch in the end to ensure that the render has all the information needed. So that's where I'm currently at. I still need to figure out a ton more things like how to work with ACES in video and how CG and video compositing looks like in ACES, but I'm happy that I finally dipped my toes into the ACES workflow and at least I figured out the right settings in cinema. If someone knows why the Untone map setting doesn't work as expected, do let me know in the comments below. My instinct says that it should work, but I'm probably missing something. Now, before we finish up, I would like to remind you about the poll currently running in the community area of my channel. You can vote for the type of assets I'm going to work on next, and so far it looks like Debris is winning. I've already started working on the assets and I'm very pleased with the results, but in the meantime, if you have a need for food assets or you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and get the food collection from my website. And I think that about wraps things up. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.